Are these guys in Washington totally insane? This just happened. The United States in one day added $275 billion to our national debt. Look at that massive wall in one afternoon. What the hell happened? Well, Social Security checks had to go out that day. But come on, guys. We are watching the decline of an empire happening in real time. So I'll ask you guys, are these guys in Washington playing with fire? Do they have a death wish? But hold on to your answer. You can answer that in a second because I'm going to show you an amazing few pieces of news that show you how the United States and Western governments right now are playing nuclear suicide against Russia. So if you're an investor, you need to pay attention to what I'm about to show you because this is a massive debt and energy crisis of our own making. This is a self-inflicted wound. We'll get there in a moment. But first, last week, something happened that most people didn't even notice. It was such a small news item hidden behind the drama of a government shutdown and President Trump being hauled off to court. In fact, it only happened for a few minutes. But in that few minutes, it sent shockwaves through the energy markets. A small piece of breaking news leaked on Twitter from Forbes magazine, and it showed the Russian uranium company Rosatom was going to stop sending uranium to the United States. What? Really? This was a stunning piece of news to those of us that are following energy markets. If this were true, the United States would suddenly be cut off from one of the biggest sources of enriched uranium in the world. How then would the United States power its nuclear power plants? Well, it turns out that piece of breaking news was false, or so it would seem. Was someone testing the waters, perhaps? So then a few minutes later, the company sent out a message saying, no, 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 that's not true. We have no plans to stop sending uranium to the United States. Hmm, sounds very, very fishy. Fishy indeed. That news sent uranium prices even higher. They're currently going through the roof. Uranium prices have skyrocketed over the past few weeks. So was this a trial balloon from President Putin? Perhaps a message? A message saying, hey, stop messing with us. Stop sending weapons to Ukraine. Keep pushing us and NATO into a nuclear war and see what happens. And we turn out the lights in the United States with the flick of a switch. Was it a trial on the part of Putin? Because that's exactly what would happen. With the flick of a switch, Putin could shut off America's nuclear power, which makes up 40% of all clean energy in the United States. Just look at what an energy crisis has done to Germany. A crisis of their own making, shutting off their nuclear power plants. Germany, again, imported more electricity than it exported in September. Take a look at this chart. In mid-April, the left-green Liberal Party shut down the remaining nuclear power plants at this spot on this chart. Smart move, Liberals. Look what happened. And now look at this new data out this morning on manufacturing output in Germany. It used to lead Europe in manufacturing. Now look at them at the bottom of the list. And who's at the top of the list? This is, again, a disaster of their own making. So did Putin get some kind of secret message about what Congress was about to do? Because... When I asked you earlier if these guys in Washington are insane, they go ahead and totally make the case for me. The U.S. House of Representatives passed a new bill banning uranium imports from Russia. What the hell are they thinking? Are they insane? The United States has been sitting on mountains of uranium that they do not extract because of liberal environmentalists. And if they started right now to start doing this, it would take a minimum of about four years to get up and running and start fully extracting uranium in the United States. So now you're going to cut off your biggest source of enriched uranium from Russia, all because you want to play politics with the war in Ukraine. And they're doing this, by the way, as we're heading into winter. Oh, and oil prices are through the roof, teetering close to $100 a barrel. So let's cut off our nose despite our face. On top of it, African nations, which have been another source of uranium for Europe and the United States, are leading coup after coup after coup, telling the West, get out of our countries, stop stealing our uranium. What people want is to gain back their wealth, the, back their ura uranium, their gold, their iron, their uh, phosphate, their oil, their gas, and this scares the West. So the timing of all of this could not be more boneheaded. Congressman Jeff Duncan, who's on the Energy Committee on the House of Representatives, said this about the war in Ukraine. He said, it's evident we need to wean ourselves off of Russian uranium, basically because it's a national security risk. Okay, wean yourself off of it, but don't go cold turkey. Almost all of the United States uranium is imported. 15% of it comes from Canada alone. By the way, put a pin in that for a moment. We're going to come back to Canada in a second. Now, remember the Biden administration blocked all oil imports and natural gas imports from Russia. The only thing they continued to allow was enriched uranium. 
Oil prices shot way up, so too did natural gas. Do you see a pattern here? Self-inflicted gunshot wounds, artificially driving prices, squeezing us into an energy crisis that we cannot afford right now. I mean, I'll just ask you guys, what does it cost to heat your homes right now? And are you concerned about the winter time and how much your energy costs will go up? Meanwhile, the United States businesses appear to be going fully into nuclear. Elon Musk, over the past few weeks, has been tweeting like crazy about the absolute demand for nuclear energy, how safe it is, how efficient it is. He's been pressuring the United States government into expanding our nuclear reactor capabilities. Will they listen to him? They're going to have to now that they shot themselves in the foot. Oh, and we got word this week that Microsoft is getting in on the nuclear game. I'm not making this up. The demand for artificial intelligence data centers is off the charts right now. They're going to be building massive artificial intelligence data centers. And Microsoft says, forget oil, forget natural gas. We need a base load ability to be able to keep the power on nonstop. And the only way to do that, they say, is with nuclear power. Forget all of the other forms of power. We need nuclear power plants. And what they're going to do is they need these artificial intelligence centers to be built with smaller module reactors. So they're going to be using these modular nuclear reactors, which is the future of nuclear energy in the United States, not these massive nuclear facilities that you're used to, but smaller modular nuclear reactors that companies then can use to power their businesses and get ready for energy prices to continue their upward push squeezing your wallet, making it more difficult for businesses to create profit as energy costs eat into their bottom line. So, of course, this is why they want their own sources of power. They don't want to be crippled like what's happening in Germany, which just shut off its nuclear power plants. And the United States blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Energy costs skyrocketed in Germany, and then businesses had to shut their doors. This is what happens when politicians play with fire. So we'll see if the Senate passes this big uranium bill and President Biden signs it. There is broad bipartisan support to make this happen. So get ready, folks. The nuclear transition is about to happen in the United States. That's the news update part of today's video. Now I want to tell you about today's sponsor, which is arguably the best uranium company I've ever featured on this show. Please pay attention to this. This is tied directly to all of this uranium breaking news over the past week. So the timing on this could not be more important right now. And that's why I wanted to feature this in today's show because of this huge upside potential, in my opinion. Now, this company is called Atha Energy Corporation. The reason they're called Atha is because of the Athabasca Basin, where they own a ton of land, which if you've watched my show for any length of time, you know all about the Athabasca Basin. It's the highest grade uranium location in the world. It's the best. It's in Canada. It's not in Russia. It's not in Kazakhstan, not in Africa. And this company owns over 3 million acres in the Athabasca Basin, the highest grade uranium deposits in the world. Now, here is their ticker on your screen. And wait until you see why I think this company is the best uranium company I've ever featured here on the show. And by the way, let me be clear. I'm an investor in other uranium companies. But this one, in my opinion, could top them all, which is saying something. So first, this company is really cheap right now because, number one, they are a newly listed company and no other big media has even covered this company. They haven't been featured on CNBC or Bloomberg or any TV shows. And look how cheap their share price is right now. Very cheap. So you're learning about them before anyone else is hearing about them. So let me show you why I think this company is in a fantastic position. First, let's provide some context here. Listen to how genius the owners of this company are. Ten years ago, right after the Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan, no one wanted to talk about nuclear power. So what did these guys do when everyone else was running away from nuclear, which was unfounded, but, you know, people were scared, right? That's what happens when people are scared of things. Well, they ran towards it. They ran the opposite direction. Fortune favors the bold. They went to the best uranium basin in the world and they staked as much land as they possibly could get their hands on. Over 3 million acres. Again, while everyone else was scared, they said, look, let's do it. Let's go for it. So for 10 years, the land has been staked. That land position has already been staked. That was here on this chart for the price of uranium. Look how cheap uranium was back then. Again, everyone was scared of investing in uranium. And now... It's impossible, literally impossible, to compete with their business model because it would take you until about the year 2033 to assemble a similarly sized land package. And now prices are skyrocketing for uranium. There's no way you would be able to get a similarly sized land package for that price. Impossible. So if you wanted to create a competing company, you would be screwed. You wouldn't be able to do it. 
there's no way you could compete with this company. Next, these guys have not even drilled a single hole yet on these 3 million acres. Yeah, let me repeat that. These guys have not drilled a single hole yet on these 3 million acres. So they've been sitting on this land, waiting for the right moment to pounce. And that moment is right now. Now they have the entire discovery potential ahead of them. And two of the most successful prospectors in the entire basin work for them. They are the ones that discovered hundreds of millions of pounds of uranium, and they're the largest shareholders of the company. They are legends in the uranium mining space. They are the majority shareholders of Atha Energy. So right now, this company is beginning its exploratory phase, which is what you do before you start to actually drill into the ground. So they're getting ready to start tapping into the 3 million acres that they own. 3 million of the finest uranium land in the world. So again, the demand for uranium is off the charts and only about to get even worse as we turn off Russian uranium. Think about that. Right now, we get 15% of our uranium from Canada. How high do you think that percentage will go when Russia and Africa are out of this picture? Who knows? But my guess is that increased number will come from Canada. And my guess is companies like Atha Energy Corporation are primed and ready to go to take advantage of the increased demand coming out of Canada to fill that void left by Russia. Guys, do your own due diligence on this company and you'll see what I see in terms of their land package and the shareholders buying stock in their own company. The owners continue to buy stock in their own company. Again, here is the stock price on your screen right now. It's very cheap price in terms of share price right now. Even if you just grabbed a, a few shares, you're not breaking the bank. I'm going to have links to their website in the description below so you can read all about their latest uranium projects. And I'll have a ticker in the description as well. And we will see you next time, everyone.